Right, now this will tell us. And that's pretty conclusive. Still going. Close. I think he's got it down. How strong is he? Oh, welcome back to the Pick and Go. Uh, that's right, it's your number one podcast for all things Super Rugby. And we're getting to the business end of the season. Once again, I'm joined in studio by Pretty Weepu. Pretty, how are you, mate? Yeah, good, good. Not too bad, actually. Just um, it was good to see some of the uh, games over the weekend, uh, the quarterfinals. And I think everyone might have been a bit nervous in the Start of the Hurricanes game. <laughs> not, a, not again. <laughs> <laughs> but then obviously the boys uh, got into their business and, uh, you know, started uh, playing the way that we, we've been seeing them play. Very much so. Uh, let's uh, head up north once again to our good friend Ben Searle of Surly Talk Sports. Uh, Surly, how are you going, mate? Yeah, no complaints here, mate. Northcote got a win. It was a good weekend. Blues got the dub. Chiefs got the dub. Warriors got the dub. That's that's the full trifecta for me. Yeah, I'm a big time Northcote supporter. I love Northcote. <laughs> oh, here we go. Turn it up. Bro, what about you? What about you, Pretty? Well, um, uh, you had a bit of uh, family sport. Uh, yeah, just coaching my uh, daughter's netball team uh, and her her league team as well on the weekend. But um, yeah, it's just. Wasn't too bad. Had to watch uh, a few boys play in our, our second 15. Uh, we've had a few injuries from last Wednesday's uh, traditional against Rongatai. So trying to cover our, our basis of uh, boys that we can bring in. Right now, let's get down to business straight away. We'll try and make this a nice streamlined podcast. Maybe the first for the season. I don't, <laughs> I don't think we've ever really had something that's been uh, structured um, where we all know what's going on uh, and we uh, we work to a timetable. Uh, we try to, it just, it doesn't seem to have, it, it's almost like Hurricanes rugby of the, uh, <laughs> was it the uh, early 2000s or <laughs> where, where, where you boys just used to throw the ball around, it seemed like. And, and uh, for the best. <laughs> yes. Uh, anyway, the question, uh, well, I've got a question for you this week, boys, uh, and we'll hit up to you first, Surly. Should the Aussie teams be kicked out of Super Rugby <laughs> because they're not that super? Like I, I raise, I raise the idea of the question. To be honest, um, yeah, outside of the Brumbies, they're not that super, are we? And I think I said last week, I think we we're going to see the gap between the top four sides and everyone else in this competition. To be fair, and that was on display on the weekend. Uh, you could boot them. Me personally, I, I quite like them being in there just because it's a chance for some of our fringe guys in the squads to get opportunities. You know, when you're playing the Waratahs, the Force, and whatnot, you get to see that second level of talent get an opportunity in our Super Rugby sides. Guys like your Cole Forbes, players like that, get an opportunity to stamp their mark on the on the international or oh, the Australasian stage. So I think we keep them in there. There's nothing better than pumping the Aussies. Plus. Every so often they beat the Crusaders, our weakest New Zealand team, which is always nice to watch as well. Pity you, um, you'd love to see the Brumbies kicked out of Super Rugby because that <laughs> man would mean you'd never have to, you wouldn't have had to travel to Canberra ever. Oh, I'm pretty sure they would have found another uh, town for uh, one of their Super teams that no one wants to go to. Um, oh, you know, I guess it's it's just the way that they uh, their franchises are. are, are functioning at the moment. I think the Brumbies have always been uh, at the top in terms of uh, picking order. Um, I mean, they've always made it, uh, well, not always, but majority of the time, they're the top uh, Australian team that's uh, put their best foot forward. And um, no, I actually quite like the rivalry. So, you know, I'm always keen to have uh, Aussie teams involved. And I was gutted that the... Um, South African teams, uh, you know, left the competition um, because they were uh, a pretty tough um, place to go to and, and try and get wins. And, you know, that uh, rivalry between all three is uh, was always a massive one to, to be involved with. Just going on that subject of the South African teams, I think back and it, it seems like the Hurricanes almost always 
travelled to South Africa in the first few weeks of the Super Rugby competition. Uh, did you did you sort of find that? Did you get that feeling? Yeah, pretty much. Went over there pretty early. Uh, played a couple of games. Played a couple of games, and then on the odd occasion, you travel to Aussies, play one there, and then uh, and then come home. But um, yeah, we, started the campaign. It's always usually the front end <clears throat> where uh, we went to South Africa. Um, can't complain though. Those boys travelled for five weeks, so they were a bit longer than us uh, in terms of uh, you know having to travel away from home. So, but yeah, it was a pretty good uh, trip going over there. Uh, um, and just trying to uh, block out all the uh, supporters. They're quite <laughs> quite uh, vocal over there. Did they let you know you were an enemy territory? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, especially at, uh, in Newlands um, when you're playing the Stormers because they're, they're real close. So, you know, you're sitting on the bench and I'm just chipping your head. <laughs> you're just like, holy hell, what is going on here? I'm not used to this. <laughs> they're usually like about five or ten metres away from us so we can only just hear things. But, <laughs> but yeah, it was always a, a tough uh, place to go to. Um, but you made some, uh, made some great mate, uh, memories and mates uh, uh, with some of the uh, South African boys. Did you enjoy your time there? Look, did did you get the opportunity to, I guess, have some just downtime while you were over there, just away from training, just do something, just to relax? You always have um, a day off, um, and so day off means they always try and organise stuff. Uh, boys, depends where you are, um, they try and uh, golf is usually one of the main ones. Were you a golfer? I was a hacker. Not a golfer. There's a difference. <laughs> I just go there and hack the ball. <laughs> a couple of times we've played in some pretty beautiful spots and uh, you hit it sort of just off the rough into a little bit of shrub and all that. Forget and you're about going it. to go and get it. And then the boys are like, some of the uh, locals are like, don't go in there. All right, then. <laughs> <laughs> just kick the ball, uh, a different ball onto the uh, dry, uh, fairway and then uh, play on. Who was the best golfer in the team? Uh, I would play... Uh, with Rodney quite a bit while we were over there, and he had a pretty pretty good um, handicap. Suyalo? Yep. Was he right-handed? Uh, yep, normal, yeah. Yeah, yeah he would he, oh, he could hit a ball, though. Like, geez, we'd always try and compete with him. We would always lose. <laughs> and just like that, we've gone over time. Nice, boy. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're trying to stick to our schedule here and now <laughs> right we'll head back to Super league uh, and um look we, we've been helping razor out uh, the last few weeks uh, with um what will be his first all black squad ever and this week we're going to have a look at the locks and i think one lock is probably locked down uh, for want of a better term Mm -hmm. uh, but Surly, do you want to just throw out a name or two uh, that you think will be in the conversation when it comes to uh, Scott Robertson picking the uh, locks for his first All Black squad of the year? Yeah, I'll start by saying gutted for Patrick Tuipolotu because I think he was the clear second favourite, probably in career best form in my opinion. Just his physicality, his leadership, he'd really put his hand up and he was going to step into that vacant jersey. So sucks to see him gone. I think Tupo Vai now has a massive opportunity to lock down that second spot. For me, it's going to be interesting from there, though, because I do think, respectfully, there is a bit of a drop-off into your Sam Darys, your Walker Leaweris, Manaki Salby Rickett, guys like that. Does Razor go for someone like that? Or does he push a Sam Apeni Finau into a lock and then he can pick an extra loose forward in your Peter Lakai, your Braden Yossi, someone who perhaps was on the fringe that wasn't going to make it, but now might make his way in, so... That's the way I'd be going, the second option, picking one of those young loose forwards and uh, trying to get Sam Penny Finau or someone like that who can cover lock as well. But it, it does open up a, a big gap there now. Pity. Um, with that injury, uh, of, that unfortunate injury, um, I think Surly's right that the locks were fairly easy to pick. Scott Barrett, now he's... He's the one in, but who else? Do can we look at the Canes and and have a look at someone like a 
Sangster? Yeah, well, he's he's actually been uh, doing pretty well. Actually, put it like uh, in terms of his role uh, within the within the team of the Hurricanes, anyway. And I, I guess you know he's probably not quite at the same level, but I mean the only way that we can sort of bleed uh, new new locks or trying to uh, bring through good locks is uh, get them immersed into the uh, environment and learn from the best. So if you've got the best uh, there, you want to be trying to uh, sit down with them and have a co- coffee around how, what makes you tick, uh, what can I do to be not uh, exactly like them, but what can they do uh, or what can they take from their game uh, and see how they can mold that around them. But, yeah, I've been pretty impressed with Sangston in terms of his uh, opportunities that he's been given. Uh, he's been pretty dominant too for the for the Canes. But, yeah, I would have gone with uh, opportunity with, for Vai definitely to to come into the squad and you know try and stamp his authority. Um, I feel sorry for any uh, first five eights that want to go up against them, so <laughs> <laughs> we might have to put a few more uh, tens from the, the UK and onto that uh, oh. tick box. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess certainly uh, a Tupo Vai. He, he's someone who has um, been. I guess he's got that sort of flexibility to be able to possibly um, add a pinch, uh, jump into lock. But do you do you see Scott Robertson going in without you know at least two specialty locks? Yeah, well, does he pick up the phone? SOS. We saw uh, Brody <laughs> having a bit of fun on on Friday night in Hamilton. Is he the guy that gets the call? I don't know. It, it, it's a tough one. The, the next cab off the rank for me would have been uh, young Holland from the Highlanders because I think he's a future All Black written all over, but he's not eligible at the moment. So that's another spanner in the works too. So knowing Razor, he's probably cooking something up. I wouldn't be surprised if Geordie Barrett gets a run there. You never know. So who's the better lock department for the brothers? Yeah, well, it's in, it's in the DNA, isn't it? It's in the DNA. Chuck them in. <laughs> they probably packed down a couple of scrums at home uh, when they're grown up in Taranaki too. Yeah, it's no different running down the hallway or running on Eden Park. It's the same stuff, man. <laughs> right, Scott Barrett, he's in. Um, and we're just wondering uh, who else Scott Robertson decides to uh, go with. Okay, time to have a look, a uh, little review of last week's uh, quarterfinals. And um, it, they pretty much went to, uh, I guess, to script. Um, as, well, we'll start with the first game, Chiefs-Reds. And Surly, your Chiefs were never really challenged by the Reds. It was a high-scoring, free-flowing game, um, entertaining for the fans. But the Chiefs seemed in control pretty much from the outset. Yeah, I think you could tell from the warm up, right? There was just a big lift in intensity from the Chiefs. And I think it's what we've been waiting for them to do all year. Uh, their defense was massive. They were putting in some huge shots, particularly their loose forwards. Wallace Satiti, man, has he come on and leaps and bounds. A year ago, he was playing club rugby for Massey up here in the Harbour Comp. Now he's one of the best eights going around. So you love to see guys like that really take their opportunities. And then on attack, they just got that razzle, don't they? That whole back line, they can create opportunities from nothing. They had the luxury of pulling shooter at halftime because the game was already done. Yeah, they, they look like they've finally hit their straps, but at the same time, all year they've been bullying those teams that are below them. It's now time to see if they can go up a notch and play some finals footy against a hot-to-trot Hurricanes team. Yeah, we'll get to last week's punting later on, but I'm pretty sure that Pity picked uh, Tupaya to score a try here. I think just about everyone else in the back line scored a try. <laughs> uh, and, of course, uh, Toki uh over for a double back to his uh, bustling best. The the Chiefs are just their their form has just steadily and steadily been getting better and better over the last few weeks, and they're just about to hit their peak. This is a very very dangerous time. They they look very very good, Pity. Oh, I think uh, the loss to uh, the Blues and and the Kings has actually just helped them grow. Well, you know, in terms of learnings, and um, I guess you know, it's like they've always uh, they've come back to the form that they had at the start of the campaign, 
uh, with that exciting footy, but that it's actually uh, most of their opportunities they actually sticking now, um, and I think that's down to the pressure of playing against uh, I, I guess the two top teams in the competition at the time, uh, and I think that yeah they're just growing from that. I mean, we know how how um, deadly that backline can be, and especially that loose forward trio. Jeez. I'm just glad that I'm not playing anymore. <laughs> My ribs would be puckeroo. Uh, <laughs> I would have been in the uh, in the cab of uh, being the uh, ticked off of my ribs. <laughs> but uh, I mean, yeah, they're, they're slowly they haven't peaked, which is good, and they're just slowly ticking away. And there, it's going to be a, be a good week uh, game this weekend. Second quarter final, and it was the afternoon kickoff down at the Tinney House on Saturday last week with the Canes. Uh, we'll, we'll start with you, Pity, because once again, it was a, a dusty start, I guess you could say, for the Canes. And I've seen this many times before, and sometimes those dusty starts turn into uh, poor propositions for uh, <laughs> Hurricane fans. In the end, the Canes were just a wee bit too good. I'll give props to the bookies here. They had the Rebels 27 and a half point underdogs. The Canes won by 27 points. So if, <laughs> if anyone wow. did take the Rebels plus 27 and a half, you'd be, uh, you'd be a wee bit nervous. Um, but uh, you got home in the end. Uh, the Canes in the end were too good, pity. Um, and Omua again. Um, boy, oh boy, he, he is a the the All Blacks uh, have got a lot of riches in the number two jersey uh, to pick from, and um, he's certainly putting his hand up after having that injury uh, mid season. Well, it doesn't seem like he's bloody uh, skipped a beat, to be honest. I mean, uh, him to score that try, a uh, bit of uh, individual brilliance. He caught the ball first and just took off. Uh, which we know he's got that speed and that power to to back him up too. But um, yeah, he's looking pretty uh, solid in terms of uh, being selected again. Um, but I mean, yeah, it was a bit slow at the start. I think not not just uh, the fans. I think the boys might have been a bit shocked at the start of the game. Um, you know, with uh, the way that they usually play, uh, they always start pretty well. Um, but yeah, I, I guess they once they realised that they just needed to calm down and. Uh, continue what they've been doing uh, week in, week out. They got it right in the end, and I, I guess, you know, the re result speaks uh, for itself. But, yeah, I wouldn't say it was a solid performance, um, but it was an opportunity for them to uh, make sure they get everything right leading into this bloody uh, semi-final, which is going to be huge. Certainly, we talked about a major injury for the Blues. Uh, we saw Numia go off for the Canes in this quarterfinal. It's critical because he's been playing some very, very good footy all season, plus the fact that Lomax has been away, but I'm sure we'll get some inside oil from Pity, uh, him being from over the hill in the Nui there. He'll uh, know what's going on with the Lomax family. And I, I heard that Lomax could have played last week, yeah. uh, but they just decided to give him an, uh, another week's rest sort of thing. But um, outside of the injuries, uh, the Canes look pretty good. Yeah, Chuck Rubin Love in that mix too, and you've got three names that you probably expect to see in the All Black squad in a couple of weeks' time. So, yeah, outside of that, they're playing great, and shout-out to the Rebels too. I think that first half, there was probably a bit of emotion in there too, and I think we saw it at full time. It was literally the last game for the franchise, so they were always going to come out and play some decent rugby in that first 40, but in the end, the Canes quality just shone through. Yeah, I, I want to see Xavier Numia out there, so hopefully he's okay because I think he's had a massive season this year. He's He's been one of the best front rowers in the competition, and you saw that potential with him throughout your NPCs and stuff because he's, he's got that footwork and he's so good ball carrying, but it was probably his work at set piece that had been identified at his work on, but that Kane's pack, is, particularly at scrum time this year, has been so good. So, yeah, hopefully they're full strength. Come semi-finals, you want to see the best players out there going at it. Yeah, the, the, it certainly brings up a very good point there. The, the Canes pack has been one of the best in the comp all season. How do you think you would have gone behind that pack, uh, Pity? I mean, you were behind a, a very good pack in your day, but they just seem to be... Oh, I don't know. They do, there's a lot of youth in the in the pack, certainly in the um, loose forward uh, trio. Uh 
but the Type 5 just seemed to be humming along very, very nicely. Yeah, I think it's just all, all down to uh, the structures that they've got in place. It's uh, it's awesome. Like if you, like I know we've struggled in the in the past with uh, set piece, not just scrum, but also the line out. Um, but it seems like they've uh, got a good mix there with uh, the the coaches there to to help sort of nurture them through it. And it's been I've been pretty dom- like you said dominant the, the throughout the whole campaign. Um, yeah, I think. I'll probably still be uh, like how I was with the when I was playing. Still be uh, quite slow to the breakdown, but I mean, <laughs> to have a pack like that week in week out, uh, I I had glimpses of it uh, throughout my career, but we just weren't consistent enough around it. And I don't know whether that's down to fitness or technique at the time, but um, yeah, if I had a pack like that, that was a uh, solid week in week out like that, man. No, I think we'd probably would have won more titles. <laughs> Not just the one. <laughs> Shots fired. Shout out to the Hurricanes pack of the uh, 2000s. And he's probably going to kill me after this. <laughs> Lock your doors, buddy. Lock your doors. Yeah. Yeah. John is probably going to be oh, yeah, is that right, mate? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, I hope Rodney Soyaro is listening. No, I hope, no Rod is, it wasn't me that said it. Yeah. Uh, the uh, third uh, quarter final up in uh, Surly Land. Blues thirty six, Drew a five. Um, it was it was pretty much as, as expected. Surly, um, the only negative the the big injury. Yeah, pretty much. I think it ticked most of the boxes. The Blues went exactly at their best, but they did enough to get the job done. The Drew they didn't stop trying, but just not enough weapons away from home. But yeah, the, the big talking point was probably that injury to Paddy. And then I thought Dalton was outstanding yet again. And he appears over the last month to gone to another level as well, really wanting to push his claim for that All Black 7 jersey. He, he's had an outstanding Super Rugby campaign. And I thought he was great again on the weekend. I think he was man of the match. So really putting his hand up. And I assume he'll be skipper this week. But that kind of caps off a great season for him so far. Yep, scored a nice try. Uh, Caleb Clark. Uh, bustled over for a couple as well. They, they, they really are looking dangerous, the Blues. And, and the bookies have got them favourites to win uh, Super Rugby, the actual title. Oh. They've got them ahead of the Hurricanes, uh, Pity. Did you tell them? Oh, yeah, I told them. <laughs> they don't listen to me. I'll give you the tip. <laughs> in fact, they, they put a fence up around their desk so I can't get through. <laughs> now the Blues are looking... Uh, oh. They were just unfortunate to uh, miss that uh, bonus point through uh, through the through the Chiefs, but um, I, I guess thanks, you know, thanks, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I, I don't think it matters where they go. I think the the if they were to go away for the semi, I mean, for the final, the, they'll definitely um, push um, the Canes if the Canes go uh, go all the way. But um, just yeah. I felt sorry for for the Drua. I, I know they didn't fire enough shots, um, and they just yeah, they just weren't quite at that level yet. But um, um it was awesome to have them uh, in the in the playoffs, and hopefully they can go a bit further next year. Oh, oh as we've said all season, the Drua in Fiji mm-hmm. are a different proposition, but by far to the Drua in either New Zealand or Australia. Um, so when they can start picking up that for or take that form from home and take it on the road with them and pick up a few road wins, then we might start talking about them having a, a home quarter final. We which just need would to get be, all the Fijians which, to come to whichever place. You know, hey, we'll bring some cover. You fellas come down. <laughs> <laughs> That's all they have to do. Yeah, they'll bring some cover from uh, Fiji. <laughs> oh, they, they, it was great to have them in the uh, quarterfinals, though. Um, and, and, and that was probably their final was making the quarterfinals, uh, I guess. I, I would have liked to have seen them um, maybe have a wee bit of a, To be fair, they did throw the ball around quite a bit uh, against the Blues. Things does uh, didn't quite stick for them. Um, but there's plenty there for them to build on. I'm sure that they'll take a lot of positives out of making uh, the quarterfinals and hopefully 
Um, we see them back next year, bigger, better, and stronger. Um, it just, I, I just think back to the final round of the regular season and that Josh Iwani try that stole the bonus point from the Blues. If he doesn't score that, then the Blues finish top of the table and they're probably playing the Chiefs yeah. this weekend. It was, it was all part of the, the plan. Came- it was it was, yeah, plan, yeah. I'm starting to think that there's an ulterior motive here. <laughs> the, the Blues let them score that try so that they wouldn't face the Chiefs in the semi-finals. Yeah, 100%, Paulie. You're on to it. You finally come round. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the final, a quarterfinal, uh, that place that Pity loves to go, Canberra. Uh, the Brumbies, uh, look, the Highlanders put up a fight here, Surly. They, um, certainly in that first half, they, they gave it everything. And if the bounce of the ball goes one way or another, uh, maybe they keep it a wee bit closer as well. Yeah, I, I thought in that first half in particular, they gave a great showing because yeah, I had Brumbies 13 plus And when I was watching that, I thought, hang on, there, there could be a bit of a chance here. I think in the second half, the Brumbies really turned it up. Their defense was pretty relentless and restricted the Highlanders to no points in that second half. But I thought the Highlanders at, at set piece time, at scrum time, were just all over them. They really demolished that Brumbies pack. Uh, when you look at it in summary, look, the, the, the Highlanders will probably take that for this season. They had a young squad. Uh, they'd lost quite a few key players and Aaron Smith and co too. So that they probably bank making a quarter final and giving the Brumbies a decent push. But yeah, they're still just that one level down from these top tier sides and they're losing Billy Harmon and co next year. I'm not sure on their recruitment, but I'd love to see them pick up a couple more big name players because I think if they could add two or three more big names in the mixer around that young talent, then they'll be a really good team over the next few years. Yeah, Brumbies um, just in the end too good for the Highlanders who put up a brave fight, Pity. Yeah, I hope you did Highlanders would go there and get the job done. Because I know it's not a, it's not an easy uh, task. Um, but like Sally said, they put up a pretty good fight at the start in that first half. Um, but yeah, it would be would be good to see. It would have been good to see them actually uh, get the job done against the Brumbies and made it a all sort of New Zealand uh, semi final. Um, but I mean, yeah, we know what the Brumbies are capable of. Uh, we've talked about uh, them being the the top uh, franchise in, in Australia. Um, and I mean, the, their, their defense has been growing. It's been, it's actually been um, pretty tough to, to try and, uh, you know, sort of breach them. Um, and when you do, that's when the, that's the only time, you know, that uh, you can actually take it, take them or make the most of your opportunities once you've, once you've breached them. So they've actually done, they done obviously figured things out and uh, got, got stuck in, in the second half and made things a lot more difficult especially if you're keeping a team to a donut in the second half. Mm. Shows how much they wanted it. Certainly does. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, before we get to a preview of the semifinals, I was just going to throw another question at you two boys. Banner in the works. It's, <laughs> yeah, I didn't put this on the schedule. <laughs> it's, it's not as Rodney Soyalo <laughs> left-handed again, is it? Because we've spoken about that. No. So, we asked a number of punters last weekend this question, and we they came up with uh, a variety of answers. I'm going to ask you both. I'll go to you first, Surly, seeing as you're sort of neutral. Who is the who is the hurricane goat? Who's the greatest of all time hurricane? Oh, pretty whipper. Um, <laughs> Uh, look, for me, man, that's so hard. I saw this content and yeah. straight away there's 10 names you could chuck up, right? But yeah, uh, Christian Cullen, I think, for me, just because I remember just being a young kid sitting down watching the TV and he was the kid you kind of emulated in, in the backyard, the, the one you wanted to be. So yeah, I, I think Christian Cullen really resonated with me as a kid. But man, again, there's... <laughs> Jonah, Jerry, there's so many names you can throw out there. Tana, it goes on forever, doesn't it? Conrad, uh, it's true. Uh, you've had a pretty good franchise down there. You've had some good players to watch. Pretty? Oh. Uh, <clears throat> I'd have to say Tana. Mm. Just because 
well, obviously a local um, Nui, winery, Nui, winery man, but the I, Nui. just um, I remember when Nui and I both were in the squad, um, how much it sort of uh, resonated with where we're from. Um, we're, you know, watching uh, someone that we didn't know at the time was that we'd idolise. Um, but when we made the team and we knew that tunnel was there, it was, uh, it was like a huge thing to, to actually not just watch him on the TV or watch him at a, at a, at a game, um, but actually be in the same team uh, as him and try and learn as much uh, as we can. Um, yeah, probably him, but I, yeah, I'm like, silly. there's heaps. There's, there's no real wrong answer. Um <clears throat> Here you you can make a case for a number of of he, players. Um, obviously, I hope a lot of those hurricanes are listening now, and you can have a go at Pity for not saying that you should have been the goat. Um, of yeah, oh, if I look, um, I'm going to go with Jerry Collins because uh, he's a Norths boy, um, and I remember I can't remember what college he went to. I think it was one out the hut. I don't know if it was Scott, uh, yeah. uh, Jerry. No, he's Pat's town. Oh, did he go to St. Pat's? Yeah. Oh, so I remember uh, we had a preseason match down in Porirua against East Coast, Ngati Paro. Um, and this was when Jerry was at college. And he had played uh, for St. Pat's town on the Saturday. And we were having a preseason game against East Coast on the Sunday, I think. And he turned up at Putty to a Park <laughs> because he just loved to play foot. He he would play every day of the week, I, I think, if there was a game on. Um, and he didn't care if it was a pickup game. And he came along and he got on for a half and he just, he was just lightning. It was just ridiculous um, how good he was. This was when he was at college. Um, so, yeah, I, I just, yeah, I remember watching him play. And it was like, you never went down the blind side uh, when you played the Hurricanes <laughs> when Jerry was on the field because you usually went backwards fairly fast. So it's yeah. either that or you didn't make sure he doesn't hit you from the blind side. <laughs> Ask Jack all about that. <laughs> Chris Jack. <laughs> oh, well, what game was that? That was here. Was that Crusaders Canes up here? Yeah. Oh. Jerry come flying in from his blind side and just bang, whacked him. Penalised for for a high shot, but I was like, bro, that's legit. That was right in front of me. <laughs> Even Jacko said it later on once he come to. But um... <laughs> it's not like you'd have a few words of advice to the ref there, Pity. <laughs> 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 no, nah, not at all. Us halfbacks yeah. are quiet. Yeah, Pity Gregan. <laughs> we don't talk. Oh, <laughs> oh sensation! But like, like I said, you you could name maybe a dozen players. Yeah. Um, and you could make a case and say, yeah, well, this is why I think uh, this guy is the, uh, the hurricanes goat. So sure. we'll make this a wee bit of a slot, uh, for next week. We'll, I'll tell you what team we're going to look at next week. Um, but we've got, we've done the canes mm -hmm. now and we've come up with three different players, uh, Tana Umanga, Christian Cullen and Jerry Collins. And there are plenty more that you could throw in there as well. Let's get on to semi-final time. And here we go. It's only only two more games for two teams and only one more game for the other two teams. Uh, if we look at the first semi-final, it's Friday night up in Surly Town. And I can't bring up the odds because my I've got the circle of death on my I've, computer. I've got it for you, Paulie, if you want, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm pretty sure the Blues were around $1.20, $1.22, something like that. He's nailed it. Blues dollar nope. twenty, Brumbies four bucks. So there you go. And um, I think they were eleven and a half point favourites. The Blues. I don't know if the game total because we're recording this on a Tuesday morning. Um, the teams haven't been uh, put out there yet, so I'm just not sure how many markets the boys have got up yet. But yeah, Blues a dollar twenty, Brumbies out at around four dollars, and the Blues are eleven and a half point favourites. Uh, yeah. Is that enough respect for the Brumbies there by the bookies, Surly? I think a lot of 
that factor comes into that 40 nil drubbing from a few weeks ago. And I think the Brumbies will be using that as motivation in a massive way. I don't expect it to be anything like that. I think this Brumbies pack is going to be really looking forward to trying to sink their teeth into this Blues pack because they got embarrassed by them. And I think without Paddy Tui Polotu in there, I think they'll they'll see an opportunity perhaps to match their physicality as well. So this Brumbies team, they got nothing to lose, do they? Everyone's expecting the Blues to march on. So they're just going to come over here and throw the kitchen sink at the Blues. I do think the Blues will be too good, but I'm not expecting a really dominant performance. I'm expecting it to be a true semi-final where the Brumbies, in particular in the first half, just give the Blues everything. Um, but I will back the Blues structures and their systems to be too strong at home. Uh, pretty, um, I can't get the markets up on my laptop, but I can on my phone, and I see that the game total set at 51.5 uh, for the Blues Brumbies semi-final Super Rugby. Uh, the 11.5 point uh, handicap, though, um, uh, if you look at it, and I know, Surly just brought up the fact that the Blues had a big, big win over the Brumbies during the season. Playoff footy's different, though. I'm, I'm sure there have been times when the Hurricanes have smashed a team during the regular season, met them in the um, the playoffs, and, and things have, um, if not turned around, got a lot closer. Yeah. <clears throat> well, and they're travelling traveling away from home, too. So, you know... I'll be making sure that this doesn't happen again and they've got a, po- a point to prove. Um, but yeah, it's it's going to be a tough one. Like, if they continue with the, especially if they use the second half of uh, the, the Highlanders game last week, you know, there's actually um, good learnings from that, that game for them to make sure that they uh, capitalise on it against the, against the Blues, who, you know, their attack has been pretty, pretty solid. I guess if anything, their their pack might not be that strong, but uh, at set piece. But I mean, around the field, they're they're pretty mobile, physical, uh, and strong. So maybe that's an area of uh, concern for the for the Blues, the 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 set piece. Then maybe these boys need to try and target that to to sort of get under their skin and uh, disrupt things. Surely so the the injury to to Ipolotu, um does that upset the balance of this Blues team. They've been, um, just like the Hurricanes, They uh, their set piece has been very, very good this season as well. Um, does this, I guess, obviously they bring someone else into lock, uh, and which means probably someone else comes onto the bench. So does that upset their sort of, uh, uh, maybe the game plan that they go into this game with? Yeah, I think any time you lose one of your best players, it hurts. But when you lose your skipper, it, it hurts a little more. And I think Paddy this year has been that enforcer for that Blues Type 5. And he's kind of been the one that set the tone of just playing tough, physical football. So I do think it does hurt. In Dalton and co, though, they still have some strong leaders in that pack. And they're going to be up for this one. Like this, this hoodoo has been hanging over the Blues heads for a long time. They've got a prime opportunity now to to make a run at this competition. And we keep mentioning Vern Cotter, but I, I think he's got them to another level. That forward pack in particular around their physicality and the way they execute. So it really does hurt. It's a massive loss. But I back the depth in this blue squad to be too good this week. It would more be the loss of them for a game next week if they can tick the box where I think that that would really show up against one of these Kiwi sides. Let's head to the second semi-final, and it's the one down here. Afternoon footy again, um, which the Canes have done, what, the last two weeks in a row. They get it again. I don't know if that is an advantage for the Canes. With, with a, I mean, it's not much of a – well, I, is it much of a difference, uh, Pity, you know, starting at 4.30 as opposed to 7 o'clock in the evening at – the obvious difference is the sun is still up in the sky uh, for a 4.30 kickoff as opposed to 7 o'clock. Uh, Surely may not know this, but the sun is always shining down here in Wellington. So <laughs> we know we know it's going to be a great day down here this weekend for the Chiefs, um, weather-wise. Um, but did you, uh, I, I don't know, did you find you enjoyed the rugby more 
for an afternoon kickoff as opposed to a nighttime kickoff? Yeah, one hundred percent. I prefer the the afternoon uh, kickoffs as just because you have more time to sort of once the game was finished, uh, you could actually go home and uh, chill and uh, go and see family and stuff like that. But I mean, did you go home through Courtney Place or was it just? Straight no, no, there was only at seven o'clock a uh, game kickoff. So. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I just I think I enjoy it because it gives families enough time to take their family there, watch the game, and then they, there's an opportunity for them to actually go out and have dinner there in, in town, uh, as opposed to a seven o'clock. By the time the game's finished, it's roughly around nine or even after nine thirty. Kids are going to be absolutely shattered. And you've still got to feed them, even though the price of food at the tinny house is quite expensive. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, afternoon's good. That time time slot's pretty good in terms of like trying to get families to come along, uh, so that after they can actually go out and have dinner together um, down the viaduct or, or wherever. But it still gives them enough time to get their feed their kids, get them, and still keep them in their routine uh, on the weekends as well. I'm not sure if the Super Rugby or the Hurricanes hierarchy factored in the fact that it's a great time slot for families to go to the footy and then maybe go out for catch some, grab a little bit of food afterwards because it's not too late in the night if you kick off at 4.30. And I'm not saying there's a big game up in Auckland at 7 o'clock on Saturday night that may have factored into this decision either, Steely. I'm not one of those conspiracy theorists, but afternoon footy is great. First of all, it's great for the fans because if it is a nice day, um, you're sitting there with the sunshine um, and it usually is more inducive to some open running football as well. You said conspiracy theory. I actually listened to the Hurricane CEO speak about it last night. Uh, he said that that's exactly why this game is being played there. Sky didn't want to clash between the Warriors' Storm game and the second semi final. And it was actually the Blues that requested this game be earlier because they thought that they would be finishing first or there was an opportunity they would. And they didn't want to be playing the same time as the Warriors because they didn't want that cross code rivalry. So. It is interesting. Is that the first time rugby's ever adjusted their time slot for rugby league in New Zealand? I'm not quite sure. He also mentioned as well that our Premier Rugby in Wellington will all be kicking off at 1pm, which I think is great because I love Arvo footy, but the only thing for me personally is that we're still playing rugby when those games are on. So it's great to see those games have been moved forward so that your club sides can get out and support the Canes too, because those are the people that really want to be watching. So yeah, I, I love it personally. I want to be able to watch every game that's on on the weekend. And this means that there's no clashes and it often results in a better brand of footy. Like you said, Paulie, it's better for families. I think it just ticks every box. It's a win-win. Yeah, it's, it's a win, win. Sunday's it's a, well. Sunday uh, footy as well. Yeah, big time. It, it, well, it, it's, it's, it's a great one because if you're a sports fan, you want to see, you want to see the Canes play on Saturday, and you want to see the Wires play on Saturday, and and this gives you that opportunity to see both games without having to either flick between two channels or record one and watch one live, which is never. It's, it's if you're watching a big game, you want to see it live. Yeah, um, or you could just be like my brother. What's he do? <laughs> when I was playing, oh, Billy, he'll, yeah, he'll watch watch the game, and then as soon as I get subbed off, he changes it straight to Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Change. <laughs> you can um, Dane Coles had a say in this. This is his two most favourite teams in the world. Surely, it's the Dane Coles rule. Do you think it is? Probably. Nice, oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't think of that. Well, hold on. let's have a look at the game in a, a, a wee bit more depth. Um, what, now, look, the Canes, the, this market's been all over the place. I see the Canes are now $1.60. Now, when I looked yesterday afternoon, um, they were $1.67. So there's been a, a wee bit of, move, uh, of a move there um, for the Canes, now into $1.60. The uh, Chiefs out to $2.25. The Canes are now, what, three-and-a-half-point favourites? So I, th I think they would be at $1.60. And the game total set at 54 and a half. Um, pretty the Look, the Chiefs are, are boiling at the right time. 
this is a very, very dangerous game for the Hurricanes. And they, I don't think they can afford to get off to the rough start that they did against the Rebels in the quarterfinal because the Chiefs will make them pay. Um, so how do you see, first of all, is Lomax playing? I wouldn't have you, no, you, come on, just I, I was actually, on. I, come I on. should have gone uh, to NZCA assistant there with Namir. Um, so every every week they try and get a uh, ex hurricane to come in and uh, announce the team. I didn't go. I was at work, and he's like, "Oh, come, come!" And I was like, "Where are we going?" And he's like, "Oh, going out to NZCA." So I was like, "What for?" He goes, "Oh no, I was gonna go and grab something." I I started thinking about. It. I was like, "What day is it today? Monday?" Ah. Oh. You're going to name the team, eh? He goes, yeah, I am, actually. <laughs> he's actually palmed it off. He's palmed it off a few times. <clears throat> and he's tried to get me to go and do it. I did it quite a, uh, like ages ago. And he was trying to figure out who else he could sort of oh. get along to us. So. Oh, oh, this is – no, I only just found – I only just found – I didn't even ask him who the team you should was. should have got Nemea on the podcast, mate. We got the wrong yeah. hurricane. Yeah, he could have exactly. told us the whole team. I even took a few of my uh, few fifteen boys with him too. They were they were like this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to have to change things up here just a wee bit. Anytime you get the opportunity to name the Canes team, you go and then you come here and then we get the good oil straight away before anyone else. Yeah, but the team oh. will the team will be out by the time this comes out, Pity. So you may as well tell us anyway. Is Ruben Love playing? Is Numia <laughs> playing? What's the go? I didn't even actually ask him either. Bloody how I should have. Um, well, I, I, yeah, I didn't even know. I didn't even text Tyrell actually I should, to find out whether he was playing. I should have, but I didn't. Anyway, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think this could potentially be a tough game for the for the Chiefs. You've been talking it up that it's going to be a dangerous game for uh, for the Canes. It's going to be a bit dangerous for for the Chiefs because I just think that the Canes have continued. The form that they started with at the start of the campaign, they probably had that one hiccup um, against Moana, where they made it a tough, uh, tough ask for them. But um, the loss to the Blues uh, is exactly what they needed uh, to 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 try and continue this uh, form because they going up against, they went up against the best in the competition. Obviously, they missed out by about four points, but it was actually. Um, from there, they've actually started to to learn from that and make things a lot more difficult for uh, opposition. So, I think this is going to be a huge run, but I, I still think that the the Canes boys will will get the job done. Pity, uh, oh, pity, Surly. Uh, <laughs> um, obviously, man. you're you're looking um, from a base a lot closer to Hamilton than we are, so. You must have a certain amount of confidence about how the Chiefs have been going and their chances in the semi final on Saturday. Yeah, I think the Canes are the better team for sure. But the scary thing about semi finals football is it's just a one off game, right? And the Chiefs have an opportunity where they are the underdogs. They get the chance to go down there and knock off the best team from the comp this year, which is a pretty exciting prospect for any team. So I think all the pressure is on the Hurricanes. Then you throw in Clark Laidlaw saying Numea and Ruben Love, they're 50 50. Is he playing a bit of uh, mind games there to uh, <coughs> help, help delay things till the teams get named and throw the Chiefs off their prep? But if those two are out, for me, I think we're going to see the odds for the Chiefs drop a little bit and people will start to get around them. Um, especially with old Stephen Donald just singing from the rooftops that they're going to pull off the upset this week on SCNZ. Uh, that's all I heard yesterday for about three hours with him on the radio was that the Chiefs are going to get the dub, even though he's all of a sudden an honorary hurricane as well. He's yeah. he's all at sea. <laughs> but, he's all at sea. But yeah, I, I think the Chiefs have the opportunity where there's no pressure on them one-off game, we saw them get tipped up against the Canes by a pretty tough penalty towards the end. They'll be fired up. They haven't quite hit their straps until probably that Reds game. Yeah, this is going to be massive. It's going to be physical. There's some matchups across the park that I can't oh, wait yeah. to see. And I think Razor and Co. will be there from the curtain Razor just licking their lips for this one. There are there are some massive massive Huge. personal battles here. Uh, if you we take a look at the hookers, uh, Toki Aho and uh, Omua, 
But oh. just to just to see, I would hate to see one of them running at the other fella, because uh, there could be an explosion. They, 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 these two guys, just know only one way and one speed, and that's straight ahead and that's full speed ahead. Yeah. So that, but I think the battle gets won in the tight. Whoever wins wins those set pieces, and whoever can turn over a wee bit of ball in those set pieces, I think will go a long way to securing a victory here. So, what, first of all, uh, Numia, is he fit? Can he play? That's a big thing. Um, even if he comes off the bench um, and is Lomax, well, I'm fairly sure Lomax will be starting this week. Um, I I heard, and you didn't. You didn't tell us, but I heard <laughs> out of the camp that he was ready to go last week, but they yeah. were happy to just give him another week's uh, rest, ready to go semi-final time. So whoever wins that tight battle, I think that set piece, I think is the team that will probably come out of top because they've got the both back lines. They've got um, just match up after match up. It, it's match just, up. It's, it'll be great to say if we get a good day, uh, if we get a good day down here, Watch out. Uh, I think we'll see a few points. points. How about the loose forwards too? Like if oh. Peter Luckey and Braden Yossi are looking for an opportunity to say, you have to pick me in this All Black squad, yeah. then going up against your Jacobsons, your Finals, your Wallace Satiti, like there's going to be some massive collisions, particularly with the intent that the Chiefs showed last week. I think defensively they took their aggression up a notch and just said, we do have this ability in us to just bash you. And that Kane's pack is going to want to just go straight through them. And both of them can play exciting brands of football too. The skill set amongst those four packs are second to none. So this for me, like, I obviously love the Blues, but this is the game you have to watch this weekend because it's worthy of being a final. Or even not not just the loose forwards. If you're wanting to put your best foot forward, this is an opportunity, opportunity for Cameron to, to try and see if he can uh, get his foot in the door. Uh, he's been playing pretty well. Um, in, in terms of guiding his team uh, around the around the field like he's supposed to, but going up against D Mac, who potentially is the the starter, you want to try and make sure you play the best that you can just to knock on that door as well. I mean, yeah, it's across the board. Uh, yeah, it's tough to pick because every matchup in every spot, every position, like it's massive. You know. It's not like you're playing uh, a super rugby player against a club player. It's like pretty much these boys are close enough to actually putting their best foot forward to, to be selected in, in this game this weekend. And as you say, this is an opportunity for them to put their hand up and say, hey, Scotty, look at me. I'm going to... And the best way to do that is to win through to the final because then you can put your hand up again and say, hey, yeah. Scotty, look at me. Yeah, and um, I think these are the games that those All Black coaches care about, right? Like in-season form counts, but if you can rise to the occasion on the biggest stage, it shows that you're ready for the next level and those are the guys that they want. Yeah. When you get to the semifinals of Super Rugby, then you're just getting that so much closer to test match mm. atmosphere and it gives us the opportunity to just see if this player, player A or player B stands up under that pressure, under that scrutiny. Um, so yeah, looking forward to this. Uh, really, really look, looking forward to this big, big game on Saturday afternoon. Um, funnily enough, we're running over time. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll head to our hunch of the week. Um, and just looking back to last week, uh, I had a hunch and... It was because I had a dream. You know, I, I dreamt that I was going home and the number on the letterbox was number eight and I've never lived at a house with number eight. And so I thought, ah, oh, that means I've got to take all the home number eight. Well, I think I misinterpreted the dream. What I was supposed to do was take my home number eight and my home is Wellington. So I was supposed to take the Hurricanes number eight only to score a try. That would have been Braden Yossi and that's what he did. So unfortunately I misinterpreted my dream last week um, and it cost me, uh, but I did have a little bit on Braden Yossi anyway. So uh, I'm pretty good. I'm not too uh, unhappy about that. But uh, anyone got a hunch this week? 
because I have another one and I think I've interpreted it correctly this time. I actually have one as well. Um, and I, I also, like you, Paulie, was having a dream the other night. And so often this year, you've referred to the cake tin as the tinny house. Well, my dream was that the home side was asleep in the tinny house because they'd been overindulging. And then the chiefs come in and take all their stuff. They pull off daylight robbery on, on a Saturday afternoon and pull off the upset. So that was my hunch, mate. You know, the boys were fast asleep. They'd passed out. In comes Jacobson and co. That They take the trophy from right under their hands. And bring it back up north, mate. We're, we're going to have an all-north final. Top of the north. Pretty <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the headline oh, on oh. Sunday will be uh, daylight robbery at the Tinney House. Um, <laughs> yeah. if, if Surly's dream comes true. Uh, have, you got a, have you got a hunch? Uh, no, no this I listen to yours, though. Okay. okay. It's, not, it's not actually a dream, my one, this one. Um, I've I've been in three Ubers over the last week, and two of them, when I got in the Uber, were playing Fifty Cent. Right, so I'm trying to think well, how does Fifty Cent tie in with Super Rugby? And I thought, oh, hold on, what about Fifty Fifty? What's Fifty Fifty? Well, that's like half a game and half a game. So, oh. A draw at half time. Yeah, that makes complete sense. So I'm going to take a draw at half time in both games, not as a multi, just as singles. I see it's paying $13 to be a draw at half time in the Chiefs Canes game. I'm going to take good a money. That is good money. So, I'm, And I'm going to do the same in the Blues Brumbies game, a draw at half time. Um, so that'll be I like part. your thinking, yeah. That'll be part. I'm just oh, hunching. Hunching. Yeah, hunching. That's my hunch. Um, and My I hunch last think. week hit as well, right? I said all the home sides 13 plus happy days, yes. four dollars eighty eight. Yeah. You did. Was that was that part of your betting strategy? Uh pity I didn't actually put all the money on that. I went a bit softer <laughs> and a bit safer, but I think I still had a win. So hey, we'll take it. Yes, yeah. In fact, well, well let's head to punting right now. <laughs> let's have a look what happened last yeah, no, week. Got nothing. Uh, <laughs> Damn it. Um, as Pity would say, uh, Pity went uh, uh, minus 100 last week. Uh, no good. Oh, no. I've gone into the minus <laughs> He's, gone gone up, man. He's uh, now minus $6.80 for the season. Ah. Uh, Surly, uh, you had a win and a loss. Uh, you're, if you had stuck with your hunch, uh, you would have had a bigger win. Yeah. Um, but anyway, you went Chiefs, Canes. Uh, Blues 13 or more, and then the Brumbies to win. Um, you had 80 on there, and then you had uh, Braden Yorsi and Rick Atelli to score a try. Um, Ricky, I had the wrong yeah. hooker. Kurt Eklund came on and dotted down. Ekl exactly. Um, so you uh, picked up uh, some money, but you are down 212.50 for the season. Oh. Uh, I had all the number eights to score a try because I misinterpreted my dream. Uh, so that was a loss. But then I had the Rebels plus 27 and a half. They lost by 27. So that half point always comes in handy, doesn't it? Uh, into the Chiefs head to head. Um, and so I got a bit of a collect there, and I'm up $941.12 for the season. Do -do 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 -do. <laughs> Thanks mm. to Pity's bet that, that you put in. Yeah. <laughs> Dollar dollar bill, y'all. <laughs> Here we go, 50 cent. There he is. <laughs> okay, uh, let's have a look at this week then. Uh, Surly, where's your hundred dollars going? So I've got an eighty dollar multi, similar strategy to last week. I got the blues head to head, and then I got the Chiefs plus six and a half, an alternative line. I think it's going to be tight, but I also want a bit of insurance there in case the Chiefs get up. That's at a dollar ninety-seven, so I'm chucking eighty bucks on that multi, and then I'm going. I'm just doing it. Blues one to twelve, Chiefs one to twelve, nine dollars and eighteen cents. I'm chucking twenty bucks on that. The trophy's coming up north. Battle of the Bombays will decide it next weekend at the Garden of Eden. Buy your tickets now. She's going to sell out fast. Thank <laughs> me later. Pretty. Um, put Surly straight, will you, please? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm going to put 50 on friggin' uh, the Canes to be 13 and over. Oh, 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 oh. 
He knows the team. He knows the team. Oh, know it's the, the team, man who knows the team. I'm just, I'm just confident of just of what what I've uh, seen and and how they've played. That's, um, that's playing three forty. Canes to win by thirteen and over three dollars and forty cents. And now I'm going to put twenty five on uh, um, Eklund to score meat pie, and, and O'Reilly to score meat pie. I actually know. I'll go with uh, Tokyo. Hall. So Eklund, 25. Into, oh, 25 on Eklund and 25 on, on Tokiaho. So the, the teams aren't out yet. Well, they sort of are. We just don't know what they are, uh, which means the bookies don't know what the teams are, which means that we don't have those markets out yet. But um, we'll make sure we get those on for pity. Um, as I said with I my hunch. What did I do? <laughs> as, I, as I said with my hunch, I'm going uh, a draw. At halftime in the game between the Blues and the Brumbies, that's also paying thirteen dollars. Got twenty on that, and a draw in the game between the Canes and the Chiefs at halftime. That's all. That's paying thirteen dollars, twenty dollars on that, sixty dollars left. Oh, why do I go anywhere else? I just stick with my man Braden Yossi to score a try. Sixty dollars on, boom bang. But oh, sh- pardon me. <laughs> was that, so what was that? Was that a boom bang <laughs> bosh? <laughs> We get that money, once more. Money, money, money. <laughs> uh, don't forget promotions this week as well. There's a uh, three or more league same game multi bonus cashback for both semifinals. Uh, so you can get stuck into that. Of course, there's the uh, mega multi uh, oval ball uh, promotion that we have. Just head to the TAB website to check out all the T's and C's there. That's it. We've come to the end of another show. Um, and there's just one more week to go of Super Rugby after this. Um, but then we head into uh, the All Black season after that. So there'll be plenty for us to keep talking about. Uh, Pity, what's happening this week? Uh, actually, got we've got a traditional tomorrow against uh, Silver Stream. So this is um, a chance for us to actually, uh, I guess, be at the top of the table. Ooh. Um Big matchup uh, between the two schools, Wellington College and uh, St. Pat Silverstream. So, got that, and then a bit more of uh, coaching. And is it out in Silverstream or is it? Yeah, it's out in Silverstream. It's uh, streamed uh, on Huddy too, Huddy Sport. So, if you wanted to watch and have a laugh at, at my my team, then you can. Gee. But we should be we should go there and get the job done. If we don't, it's because we didn't have the right attitude. Look at Pity going nuts on the sideline. Jeez, Lee, <laughs> let these kids I'm play. Oh man, make sure the camera's facing the field, <laughs> not the coaching uh, area. Surely, uh, Northcote going around this weekend. Yeah, yep. We've got uh, Silverdale. Uh, one of our boys is playing his 150th game too, which will make him the uh, most capped back for the club in, in the Prem. So quite an occasion there. I- I'm four behind him. So unfortunately, he bet me to it. The old knees gave out a few years ago. So he's lucky he got one on me there. But yeah, I'll be going to that. Then I'll be watching this Chiefs-Canes game and then heading to Mount Smart. So she's a she's a full-on Saturday of, of footy. The wife, she's lucky, mate. But I uh, told her, don't don't say I don't do nothing for you, love. You got a triple hitter of footy on your Saturday. What more could you want? <laughs> oh, it's a huge, huge weekend. If if you like sport, um, then there will be something on this weekend for you. Uh, gee, we, I, I know it's a a rugby podcast, but US Open uh, yeah. is on this week at Pinehurst, number two. The course where Michael Campbell of Titahi Bay uh, won the 2005 US Open, holding off the likes of Tiger Woods to win with an overall score of even par after four rounds. So, yep, Super Rugby semi-finals, the Wars taking on the Storm up at Mount Smart. Oh, geez, and we're we're not far away. They've like the uh, there's this game. All these, yes, yeah. So, yeah. Just get stuck in, punters. Uh, have a go. Bit responsibly, of course. Um, but we'll be back next week uh, to discuss the uh, Brumbies coming to the Tinny House to take on the Canes in the Super Rugby Final. Heard it all now. 